Hello everyone, it's Megan from KenHub here and welcome to our tutorial about the arteries of the brain, where we'll focus primarily on images that illustrate lateral and medial views of the brain. So let's get familiar with these images before we go any further. Here we can see a lateral view of the brain in isolation, specifically we're looking at the brain from the left hand side. If we slice down the midline of our brain with a scalpel, we can see a medial view of the brain and its internal structures. We'll also cut away the brainstem and the cerebellum so that we can see the cerebrum on its own. Ok, so now we're familiar with our two key images, the medial view on the left and the lateral view on the right. Another image that we'll see occasionally is this one here, where we can see an inferior view of the brain, or the brain as viewed from below. Now that we're comfortable with the images that we'll feature throughout this video, let me give you a quick overview of what we'll discuss during this tutorial. Arterial blood supply to the brain is very important because it maintains brain function, which in turn governs all other bodily functions. The arterial supply to the brain can be divided into arteries responsible for anterior circulation and arteries responsible for posterior circulation. Arteries responsible for anterior circulation arise from the internal carotid arteries and those responsible for posterior circulation arise from the vertebral arteries. So we'll kickstart this tutorial with the anterior circulation of the brain, which of course starts with the internal carotid arteries. The internal carotid arteries arise in the neck from the common carotid arteries, and we can see them in situ in our lovely lady here. They then travel superiorly to the base of the skull and enter the cranial cavity through the carotid canals in the temporal bones. Within the cranial cavity, the internal carotid arteries give off several branches, including the anterior cerebral artery, the middle cerebral artery, and the posterior communicating artery. Let's zoom in on Our Lady even further so that we can see some of the vessels I've mentioned a little bit more clearly. So first I'll label the common carotid artery, which gives rise to the internal carotid artery that we can see highlighted in green. It also gives rise to another artery called the external carotid artery. Now that we've seen how the internal carotid artery looks in situ, let's move on to a medial view of the brain, where we can see the right internal carotid artery highlighted in green. The key part to remember here is that the internal carotid artery gives rise to branches responsible for the anterior circulation of the brain. The first branch of the internal carotid we'll look at today is the anterior cerebral artery. The anterior cerebral artery arises from the internal carotid artery at the anterior perforated substance, which I've marked for you with a blue cross on your screen. It then passes anteriorly above the optic chiasm into the medial longitudinal fissure. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full length video and master anatomy.